statistics and excel correlation random number generation example get ready taking a deep breath holding it in for 10 seconds looking forward to a smooth soothing excel first a word from our sponsor yeah actually we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers they don't want to be seen with us but but that's okay whatever because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our, trust me, I'm an accountant product line. Yeah, it's paramount that you let people know that you're an accountant. Because apparently we're among the only ones equipped with the number crunching skills to answer society's current deep, complex, and nuanced questions. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we'll basically build this from a blank worksheet. But if you do have access, there's three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, answer key. Practice tab, having pre-formatted cells so you can get to the heart of the practice problem. The blank tab is a blank worksheet so we can practice formatting those cells within Excel as we work through the practice problem. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of where we will be going, what we will be doing. We are looking at correlations once again to different data sets to see if there's a mathematical relationship or correlation. Are the two data points moving together in some way, shape, or form in other words? And if they are moving together, if there is a mathematical relationship, the logical next question would be, is there a cause and effect relationship? And if there is a cause and effect relationship, the next question would be, what's the causal factor in that relationship? We're going to start off this time by making two sets of data from just randomly generated numbers. And then we'll copy and paste that so we have static randomly generated numbers. We're going to notice that each of these data sets, if we were to make a histogram, are going to tend towards the uniform distribution, as we saw in prior sections when we looked at different types of distributions that are common. Uniform distribution, bell curve distribution, Poisson distribution, exponential distribution, for examples. So because we use the random generate in each of those sets, we'll tend towards a uniform distribution. We'll plot our statistics in terms of the mean standard deviation. We'll plot these two against each other to see these points. Uh, in our scatter plot. And we want to then also just kind of recognize the relationship of random data to also what people often think of as random data. To do that, we'll make another data set which is closer to what people might imagine or what they often do when they're trying to come up with random numbers, which is to space the numbers out and you get a data set which looks kind of like this. So this is just to point out the difference between what randomness generally kind of looks like, which is usually a lot more clumpiness of numbers than what we kind of think in our mind of what randomness will look like, which is this spaced out kind of thing where all the numbers have their own kind of little area. So if we were to try to make something random ourselves, we're probably more likely to do something like this as opposed to some actual randomness uh, that would look you know, more like that. But the, what we're looking for here is the relationship between the two data sets and so whether they be random or spaced out somewhat like this, we had two different methods to create those data sets. So you would think that there's going to be a very low relationship for the, the regression line. And then we'll plot the correlation mathematically as well as, uh, as well here. And then we'll do it with Excel. All right. Let's go to the blank tab to get started. I'm going to format the entire worksheet this time, doing that first, selecting the triangle up top, right-clicking on the worksheet, and let's format the whole thing. And we're going to make it currency as we normally do, Brack num negative numbers bracketed and red, no dollar sign, no decimals, and say OK and click on OK. You could say it. You don't have to really say it, but you have to click on it. And then we go to the Home tab font group I'm going to make the whole sheet emboldened and so let's just add our data set so first data set we're going to say this I'm just going to call it rand one because they're generated from random numbers and let's call this one rand two I'm going to select those two and go to the home tab font group make it black make it white on the letters as is our typical header structure alignment 
we can just center it. We don't really need to wrap it. Then I'm going to use our random number generator. I'm going to make random numbers between 1 and 100. So this is going to be equal rand and tab. Well, actually rand between and then tab. And the bottom number I'm going to say is 1, comma, top number is 100. So give me random numbers between 1 and 100, closing it up, and enter. And there we have it. So let's see, let's make like, I don't know, uh, 200 and some of these. Let's go down like 200 and something of these randomly generated numbers. Randomly generated. Let's go 216, which should be 215 if we take the header column out. There we have it. Boom. Randomly generated. Let's just copy this whole thing over. I'm going to copy this and paste it over here for more random numbers randomly generated for number two so these have all been randomly generated but they they're not connected to each other in any way so you would think there would be a very low correlation between randomly generated one and randomly generated two even though there are numbers between one and 100. now because this random generation changes every time i do something i want to copy these two and put them over here and paste them just formulas only so that it doesn't keep uh, shuffling around. And then I'm going to make a skinny C. Skinny C, C. I made a skinny C, C. See what I did with the C? I made it skinny. I'm going to go to the home tab, font group. Let's make this black and white and alignment. And let's center this. Okay, so there's our data sets. So now let's uh, do it over here and do our statistics for RAND1 header rand2 header let's format it the same formatting as we have here so i'll select these two cells go to the home tab up top clipboard and paint brushy paint brush it right there actually i should move it to the right i'm going to cut this right click and cut it and move it to the right by pasting it right here that's that's the doing the same thing by the way as moving it like this cutting and pasting is the same as basically doing that all right, let's make a skinny F like that and then say that we want the mean, we want the standard deviation and uh, that let's keep it at that mean and standard deviation. So this is going to be equal to the average, which is the mean formula. It's a mean formula. We're going to say control shift down for ran data one, enter. 49 let's add some decimals to get a little bit more precise home tab number group decimalizing it and then let's do the same thing this time let's just copy it over if i just copy it over like so double click on it to double check it and it is picking up the correct data there so that looks good let's do the standard deviation for the sample standard deviation for the s s t d e v dot s sample tab Selecting the data, control shift down for RAND1 data and enter. Decimalizing, home tab number group, decimalize. Copying it to the right so we do the same thing for RAND data set number two. So there it is. Double click, double check. And it's done what it, what it needs to do. All right. Note, we could look at this and say, what if I made a histogram of this data sets to see if they look similar? So I could say control shift down and then control backspace insert and let's go to the charts and let's make a histogram of this histogram for rand data set number one looks like this randomly generated buckets this is going to be for rand one so it made our buckets and it listed the numbers that are how many times we had a number between 1 and 18, 18, 35, 35, 52. And if we were to approximate this with some kind of curve or formula, it's going to approximate a straight line because this is going to go towards a uniform distribution because we chose randomly generated numbers. So let's let's do it as opposed to a bell-shaped distribution right it's more of like it's going to go towards as we have more data it's going to tend towards a uniform distribution or straight line let's go to the the ran 2 and do the same thing selecting all this data and 
Uh, I hit control backspace and then insert chart histogram. Boom. Next one. And this is going to be Rand 2. So it looks very similar. See, so see, you'd say, okay, this one looks like it's going to be a uniform kind of distribution too. It's got kind of a, a little bit unusual look here that, you know, it's tapered off a lot on the 97 to 113, which is interesting, but it should still be because we use, we use randomly generated numbers. The more numbers that we produce, it would tend towards a straight line. So they look kind of similar like that, but still you would think they might not have a correlation because there's, there, there's or at least not a high correlation because there's nothing really tying these two together other than they're randomly generated from one to a hundred. So let's let's say, okay, let's make this one uh, a little bit larger. Let's make this cell a little larger and I'll make this one smaller so it fits in there, fits in the spot there, put everything in its place. It needs to go where it needs to go. And then I can choose these two, control shift down and uh, control backspace and do a scatter plot between them. Insert charts. Let's do a scatter plot. Boom. Looks like that. So now we're scattering these. I'm going to delete the top one. And this is the random numbers. And so now I'm going to say, let's hit the plus button up top and label them. So I'm going to put the axis labels. And by default, if I go to the first, let's go to the X axis first. I usually think about that first. The X axis is the one on the left. So this is the random one data. The Y axis is the one on the right. So this is equal to the random two uh, data. So there's our, there's our correlation. And you can see if I was to try to draw a regression line between them or in here, we could say plus button trend line. And you could see it's, it's got a low negative correlation to it. So I can say if I add my formula, there's the formula for the line. And then I can say, let's make sure I'm back on the trend line. I'm going to say plus trend line options. I'm bucket. I like to make my line solid and orange, a solid orange line. That's solid, man. That's solid. So there we have it. So you can see it's has a low, you know, negative correlation for, for the two that have been randomly generated between one and a hundred. Now you could also say, well, what if I wanted to put, cause we might not know, of course, what's, we don't, we don't know what, what the causal factor would be, which should be on the X and which should be on the Y, because really they're not related other than picking random numbers between one and a hundred. So if I select these two and control back and I want to put ran two on the X axis, I can go to the insert. I can go into the charts, scatter plot, scatter. There's a scattered plot out there. And to do something, we're going to say plus button. Let's do the axis titles. This time I want the X axis to be rand two. And I want the Y axis to be the rand one, which is backwards because by default, Excel will always plot the one on the left on the X. So how can I switch the two if I don't want to rearrange the actual columns? We can go into the chart design, the data. We can go into our RAN data and edit it. And then this is the X values. I'm going to delete these and say that delete that. And this was RAND1. We want it to be RAND2 info. Yo, and then, okay. And then this one, I'm going to delete that and say, this needs to be the data for the Rand one. So we switched the X's and the Y's. Hopefully if I did that properly. And so I'm going to say, okay. And okay. And so now we've got our scatter plot, which looks very similar, still negative, negative. Well, that's the wrong one negatively correlated put that right back where it goes and then it's still going to be negatively correlated so if i add the trend line trend line 
negatively correlated, so it's not like it flipped to a positive correlation, and then hitting the, the arrow, we're going to say let's make the trend line uh, solid and let's make it orange. So clearly in this example, unlike the hens and the eggs example we saw last time, we can see that there's a mathematical correlation no matter which one we, I mean, there's a low, you know, correlation. It doesn't look like it's very correlated, but if there was any mathematical correlation, then we can kind of determine that with the trend line, but we have, we don't really have any idea what the cause and effect relationship would be at, at this point, if there was any, because with the hens, it seems pretty clear that you could say, well, the hens are causing, you know, the eggs. I would think the hens would be on the X, but you can plot it either way and you're still going to get if there is a correlation, that's directional correlation uh, of a, a negative correlation sloping down, positive correlation uh, uh, sloping up. Okay, so there is that. So now what we want to do uh, is is compare that. Let's compare that to to a system just to see what people normally think of when they think of random numbers. This is way too like clumped up for most people when they actually try to generate uh, random numbers. So so let's add a, another data set what, which would be closer to what people would actually kind of do when they, when they try to set up random numbers. So I'm gonna set one, set two. So let's say set one and then uh, set two. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to say, I'm just going to space everything out by five. So I'm going to say this is going to be, let's do it. This is going to be equal. Well, let's just do it this way. We'll say five, 10. I'm going to bring that up to 100. And we'll stop it at 100. To do it like that. And then I'm just going to copy that and repeat it multiple times. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it and paste it. Now these are in the way now. Get out of my way. And then paste it and paste it and paste it and paste it and paste it. I'm going up to like 215 is what we had before. 200 and paste it to 215 or 16 right there. Let's delete these. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna just have it off a little bit. So I'll start this one like at the 30. So I'll paste it, I'll paste it here. I'll copy the same thing, five to uh, five, 10, 15, 20, 25 to 100. So we'll copy that, but I'll start it. Let's start at 35. I'll paste it here, paste, 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 and then I'll copy this last bit, copy, and that should fit basically up top here. Not exactly, but I'll keep, I'll do it, that's fine. I'll do that here. So there we have it. So there's our numbers. Now, obviously most people, when they pick random numbers, they wouldn't just count by five, but they tend to space things out. So for example, if I add another column, I'm gonna put my cursor on column K, right click and insert, and then I'll make this a skinnier column. And I'm just gonna say, this is gonna be my random numbers for one. And then I'm gonna insert over here, insert. This is gonna be random for two, and I'm just gonna generate random numbers this time. Equals random, and this is gonna be just random, not between. And that'll give us a long decimal format, home tab number, it's gonna be a long decimal formatted number. I'm gonna double click that down, taking it all the way down. I'm gonna copy that and put that over here, control paste, and double click copying it down so now we've got this random number generator. Now I'm gonna, now I wanna put a space between these two. I wanna put a column between them and then I'm gonna make two different tables for random one and random set two. So I'm gonna select column M. I'm gonna right click and insert. So now we have a spacer between these two. 
then I'm going to insert a table for both of them. Let me just scroll down and make sure I, I have everything done correctly. If, notice I have too many cells on this side. I should have brought it down to 216. So, so I'm going to delete this last little bit before I insert the table. Deleting that. And then I'm going to scroll up top, put my cursor here and go to the insert. And let's insert a table. So we'll insert a table data set one and this side I'll do the same home tab uh, I'm not insert tab tables insert a table for the second data set all right so now I can shuffle these so I'm going to shuffle them randomly so now I took my number that had a pattern and I shuffle them over here and I shuffle them these ones as well and this is similar this is more like what people would probably kind of come up with they wouldn't always end with a five but if you were thinking about coming up with random numbers, people would be like, ah, five, and then like 45 is like away from that. And then like 30 is, is pretty far away from the 45 and uh, 85. You wouldn't really think to do another 45 right here or something right next to it, right? People will usually kind of space everything out is what the point is. So let's copy these two so it doesn't keep on shuffling. I'm going to put my cursor on column L, put my cursor on column uh O as I hold control. So I have non-adjacent cells that I'm going to copy, right click and copy. Let's put that in column Q, right click and paste just one, two, three, just the value so it doesn't keep shuffling. And then I'm going to make a skinny P column. Let's make this the header by going to the home tab, font group, black, white. Let's center it. And then let's just select this data. I'm going to say control shift down control backspace and then insert and charts and let's make a scatter chart of this information and so now you have this information that uh oh, hold on a second that a lot of people would say well that looks random because it's nice and spaced out but the point is that this is not exactly random it it's this is this is going to be what it looks like when it's random where you have all these clumpings that happen more often so this clumpiness isn't a sign of unrandomness oftentimes if you see something that's too uniformly distributed like this it's likely that there's not randomness in it now whether it be random or not however we're looking at the correlation between the two between the two data sets so we'll continue on next time and we and neither of these data sets are really exactly connected to the other. The first one, we, we selected two completely random data sets. And the second one, we had kind of a system and there's a pattern to the two data sets that we used and then we shuffled them. But again, they're not really connected together. So you would think the correlation would be similarly low. So in other words, if I hit the plus button here and add the trend line, you've got a very low uh, correlation. I'm gonna say more options trend line and let's make it uh solid and orange we could still even though there's a low correlation we could still make it a trendy line by making it dressing it up properly uh so it looks appropriately dressed for the occasion so anyways next time we'll go in and we'll do the the formal calculations continuing on with the practice problem